The best way to understand yourself is having someone in your corner. Coaches can help you understand yourself by providing an angle on your issues. For more information on coaching and a way to sign up for our waitlist, click the first link in the description. Hey, man. Uh, are you Hello. a dude? Yeah, you sound mm. like a dude. What? <laughs> I, I was just, I, it just occurred to me that I, I, I wasn't entirely sure of your gender because, you know. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. I'm a guy. Um, so welcome, Five Up. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, do you want to see my face on the Discord call? Um, sure. <laughs> Why not? Okay, there. My face is revealed. Yep. Um, right, hello. Hey, man. Uh, and what do you go by? Uh, just five up for five. Twitch. Okay. And um, and and what would you like to talk about today, five up? Uh, should we just get into like the main things, I guess? Or sure. Uh, I guess <laughs> somewhat being new to twitch and the, the whole new experience of it and what goes along with that i guess or the good and the bad side of it mm -hmm. i think that's probably the main thing okay so the like how to adjust to twitch yeah essentially okay and and so can you tell me a little bit about um how you got uh started streaming on twitch uh sure uh so i'd say for around two years now i've been friends with a lot of streamers but it's always been like behind the scenes i guess so the public didn't know me um then when among us started just becoming extremely popular uh i was good at deception based games they thought it was entertaining and they brought me along for some of the streams and then they constantly sent me screenshots of like does five up stream where they can i have a link to a stream or like people begging me to stream so i eventually just said okay I'll turn it on. It wasn't really a plan to become a streamer. And then it just grew in exponentially in an insane amount. Uh, and now we're, here we are. Okay. Um, and we're going to start with one of the staples. How does that make you feel? <laughs> um, <laughs> it, feel, it feels weird, I guess, for the, 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 is the best way I can describe it, where the the element of i i don't think i can process having around like 10,000 to 20,000 people watch me like it doesn't feel like that's an actual thing uh i guess where i, I don't think it's even hit me for that aspect it just more feels like i'm talking to um a like it it, it feels the same talking to 100 people i guess mm -hmm. um but then there's other elements when you actually interact with the people that watch you, which is like the very daunting almost. But it's a really cool experience at the same time. What's daunting about it? Um, I'm not used to having people like be nervous around me, I guess. Where if you join a channel there'll be a flood of people coming in and then they'll all want to say something, but they'll also like be extremely nervous to say anything. Uh, and that's a, a weird experience for me, I'd say, just because I'm used to just talking to people, uh, just like person to person, I guess. Okay. I'm just listening to your voice. Do you mind if I ask a couple of questions in general about, um, you know ballpark features of your like where you are in life sure so can you just ballpark your age for me uh, i'm 21 okay and um do you want to share with us like are you a student or uh i'm or... not sure uh i'm not currently a student i finished high school then went immediately into working uh i did okay. graphic design okay and so are you working right now do you have a job uh, I not, I mean, I guess Twitch is my full-time job now. Yep. But before that? Uh, yeah. Um, I did graphic design. Okay. Full-time. And, um, when did you start streaming on Twitch? Uh, in mid-August of this year. Okay. <laughs> so just recently. 
Yeah. Um, and so can can you help me understand a little bit about what what about adjusting to Twitch has been challenging for you? Um There is a, I don't, I feel guilty when I can't control the chat room because it's such a new thing that I wasn't able to like build from the ground up and like start a very controlled community where um, there is just a, a combination of a bunch of different communities plus YouTube uh, all into one very fresh place. And sometimes it's just like, they'll if anything goes wrong for uh say in a game of among us because that's a game about deception there's going to be heated moments and a lot of people don't understand that and they will brigade other chat rooms occasionally and it, it's just um that's not me at all and it's very hard to control that <laughs> and that's like i feel bad about that uh, by a giant amount and then there's like the uh, I'm not going to say, I don't think I have imposter syndrome, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong, if this is in the uh, lines of it, where, sorry, I'm losing my voice, give me a second. Uh, it's, it, it's not, it, it's sort of like, I work hard for what I do, I try to be entertaining, uh, but there is the feeling of like, these are, I, I've my peers, I've only started in August, and it almost feels like a level of undeservingness. Okay. When I compare mm -hmm. myself to other people. Five up, would you describe yourself as contemplative? Uh, remind me what that means. Like, do you, are you a thinker? Yeah. I'd you say sound, so. You sound contemplative. You sound like you think about things. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would say I think a lot before um, I do anything. To the point of overanalyzing stuff. How do you know if you overanalyze something? when uh, i can think about like four different possibilities of, of ways to go like even for this interview i guess it was like what if i say something bad what if i say something good what if i reveal too much blah 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 and that's like way too much into detail versus just going with it but does that bother you to think to overanalyze um for some parts, it's helpful. For some parts, it's very, very um, bad, I guess, where you can get in your own head. I'll ask again, does it bother you? Oh, um, no. I didn't think so. So, you know, sometimes people talk about overthinking as anxiety. So sometimes, you know, we kind of think about people who overthink about various possibilities and stuff like that as a manifestation of anxiety but it it sounds to me like you just kind of calculate but it doesn't necessarily bother you mm -hmm. i'd say that's accurate and so i'd say that when you say that you overthink it's actually out of a logical conclusion that maybe you would benefit from thinking less and maybe you would do better with sort of going with the flow and letting go and doing all these things that people talk about mm. what do you think about that yeah, I mean, that would, <laughs> it, it's a lot easier said than done, is the yep. sad part about that, though. Yeah. Where. But... Yeah, go ahead, sorry. Yeah. I I don't, I've like, I'm, I've tried to do that occasionally, but it's like, I'll put myself out on a whim and do stuff spontaneous just to like, try and capture that more. But it's like, still very hard to do that to like borderline sure. impossible. Sure. Sure. Okay, so let me just try to kind of recap a little bit about what I understand about you, 5UP, and then you let me know if I'm kind of missing particular things or you want to add anything, okay? So okay. it sounds like you were friends with streamers, and then you started playing Among Us with them just kind of out of fun, maybe. And then people started inquiring a little bit about, you know, how do we watch you stream directly? And then you kind of decided, okay, maybe I'll give this a shot. And around mid-August, you started streaming, and and now you have what sounds like five to ten thousand concurrents. 
and you feel sort of undeserving, but at the same time, I'm not hearing that you're particularly distressed. If anything, you're more bewildered, and it's sort of like you just spawned in the game, and you're like kind of looking around, and you're like, what's going on here, and how do I manage this? Where am I? Yeah. Um, I don't know if re relating to the, the undeserving part where I don't know if bewildered is the correct word because I mean, more in that feeling, it's um, there's people that I've watched for years, I guess, or people that have been in the industry for years, like nine, 10 years, I guess. And then I come in and then it's only been three months. I, it, it's, it's hard to not compare yourself to other people. And mm -hmm. I, like a personal opinion is like, the, these people are so entertaining and I don't feel as entertaining as them. Uh, and then I am all of a sudden like bigger and I don't want to use bigger because that feels con like cocky almost. Mm -hmm. Um, sure. But like, I, I can't think of a better word besides that, where some of these people only have like 500 viewers, for example. And I, I feel like people deserve so much more, I guess, where I'm kind of just here. Sure. That's more the feeling of it. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I get it. So I, I'm also not noticing a whole lot of distress with anything that you've talked about today. Yeah, I mean, I'm generally a very, very like controlled person where yep. I try to not let emotions or I guess emotional sides in general um, mm -hmm. affect me where I think about it a lot and then I, I, I decide how I feel about that and go on about that rather than just like acting on an impulse or letting things affect me too much. And what is it that you're keeping at bay? What is it that <laughs> you're not, not letting, what is it that you're not letting affect you? Um, I mean, I've been, hmm. I, I guess, <laughs> uh, besides like repeating myself, I guess, um, I, I've never been one to like, it's not a lack of empathy. It's a lack of like vocal empathy, I guess, where, or emotional understanding of people. Um, I don't know how to like explain this. <laughs> okay. Well, that's what uh, I hear. Why don't you start by doing a bad job and then we'll clean it up. Gotcha. Sure. Um, when, when someone's going through a situation, I guess it's, I look at things logically and find a logical solution rather than an emotional solution. And that translates over to pretty much everything I do in general. So not just the, um, like that, that, that was more of an example trying to translate over to like everything. And that's how my mind thinks. So that's what I more mean by like less empathy, uh, in terms of like feeling and such for, so like streaming, I guess I don't understand, um, a lot of the, the feelings that go into it that a lot of people have, or like the, the response and reception from chat, I guess, where like it feels sort of like a giant disconnect. Is sure. That a little better. Yeah. It's, yeah. Good. Good job. So let me let me see if we let's see if we can do this together. Okay. Five up. Sure. So I, I don't know exactly what I'm getting this from, but I, I get the sense that like you don't live the life that other people live, and I'm not just talking about being a successful streamer. I mean that you sort of navigate the world and you kind of like see other people having issues with stuff that just is not an issue for you. And and you sort of logically understand how there are things that 
you know, people feel and things that people do and, and stuff like that. And sometimes they get bothered about things and they, they feel like imposters and whatnot. But you just don't feel those things. Like you get that maybe on some level you do. Maybe you feel it a little bit, but it doesn't it, it doesn't it seem to affect you as much as it affects other people. Yeah, I'd say that's very true. Okay, we got a very true. Okay. So yeah, man, I, I think this is going to go potentially in a different direction from uh, maybe what you were thinking or maybe what other people were thinking. Um, and it's interesting. Okay. Um, so let me ask you this, Five Up. Can you tell me a little bit about your upbringing? Um, sure. I... Hmm. I guess from a very young age, my parents were divorced. So I was always raised on the two house dynamic where half the week I'd spend a day or days at my father's house, half the days at my mother's house. Um, went to um, a, a charter school, if you know what that is. Yeah. Can you explain it to us? Uh, charter school is essentially, it's not a public school. It is a school where it is more of a small, uh, different type of uh, teaching style where for the specific one, it was like three years at a campus. This is like age six or nine. Um, so I'm, so I'm just going to speak in ages because Europeans might be watching. Um, so ages six or nine, then different campus uh, with a whole different class and such in students. Uh, three years there, then another campus after the ages of nine through 12. Then you do two years in middle school. Um, that's I guess 12 through 14, and then I went to a public school. Um, so kind of through throughout school, I, I, I've always been the person to finish things very, very quickly, where instead of, I, I don't really know what a public school system is for the ages up until high school, because I didn't go to one, um, but we were assigned very, like, a set assignments for the week and I would always just finish that in the first day and then I would just spend the rest of the week doing whatever I wanted I guess because there was no other assignment to do um and that lasted up until I guess middle school and within those things because I had so much freedom um the teachers didn't really know what to do with me and things kind of just got I guess left behind in a way where I was just my own independent, I guess. And it was hard to find the resources of like what I wanted to do fully. Um, so within these school systems, every, I'd say third year, because like I said, you switch a campus after um, three years. So first and second, fine. On the third year, the year before you switch a campus, um, something always happened to where I was learning, I guess, where Either the teacher got um, something happened to them. The dynamic changed a lot where like on my third year, uh, the teacher got pregnant and then she completely just like did not pay attention to any of the third years um, in sixth grade or age 12. Um, the teacher swapped from the main one. And for the three years that we're at these campuses, we only share the same uh, classmates for every subject. And there's only 28 people per class. And the campus has like 200 people in total. Um, and then middle school, same thing happened again, where a bunch of teachers that I know were good from my brother's experience, because he went to the same schools as me, um, they all swapped the years I got there. And so everything was sort of like a transitional period. Um, and I'm sorry, can you say, did, did you say you have siblings? I have one brother. And is he older or younger? Uh, older. And what's he up to? Um... He is, <laughs> mm, let's say he's in the medical research field, and I have to leave that a little bit um, sure. broad, I guess. Is he accomplished? For yeah, uh, well, he he's um he's twenty three. He just finished um, university, but like I, I can't say what he does. I no, guess. no, I, I'm not asking what he does. I asked, mm -hmm. is he good at it? 
Um, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> that's okay. It's uh, kind of secret, I guess. What's secret about that? Um, hmm. I'm I'm I i do not mean to pry. I'm just genuinely. No, 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 confused. no, no. I, I'm just trying to get a sense of like if he's accomplished at whatever field he is, and I don't I don't see yeah, how so that's I, identifying information. Yeah, I, I, he's a he's accomplished at what he does. I think that's all I could really say. Sure. That's that's oh yeah, basically what I'm asking. Um, five up. Do you feel like you're not like the other humans? <laughs> uh, what do you mean by that? Go into that more. Um, what was your, why did you laugh? What did you feel when I asked the question? Um, and I'll, I'll go get, go into it more in a second. I guess when you say that it instantly like makes me go into comparing myself to other people and okay. it's like, I did things differently than people. I wouldn't say. Mm -hmm. I'm different, though. I guess. I, I, yeah, but but, but that, so so I'll I'll pay attention to my wording. Okay. Do you feel like you're not like the other humans? Yes. Okay. So I'll explain more now. So like, humans have like lives, right? Where they get attached to things, they get emotional. Sometimes they get anxious, sometimes they get confused, sometimes they get, you know, bent out of shape, they compare, they have egos, um, they try hard, they suffer, they're paralyzed by lack of motivation, things like that. And it's not that you don't feel any of those things, it's just that all that shit seems to affect you less. Like, the volume on all of those things is sort of turned down. Yeah. I would agree. Okay. And so, I mean, uh, uh, five up, are you, are you like, I don't, I'm not getting much in terms of like emotional distress or like, you know, sometimes people come on and they're like dealing with, let's say depression or anxiety or like feeling cut off or feeling unmotivated or things like that. I'm not really, I'm not really getting any, any of that from you. Yeah, that wasn't, um. Uh, I guess throughout like middle school and high school, uh, or early high school, I, I had like a little bad of depression, I'd say, and I managed to work through that. And I think I'm in a very comfortable spot, uh, yep. and have been for a bunch of years now. Sure. Sure. So, so I'm just confirming that, right? So sure. Mm -hmm. I, I, we don't need to go digging for negativity. In fact, I'm just. I'm actually trying to close the door on negativity because I think mm -hmm. that becomes a much more interesting conversation. So this isn't going to be a conversation, at least I, I don't think so, about depression or anxiety or imposter syndrome or anything like that. What, what do you think about that? Does any of that stuff, like, did you want to talk about any of that stuff? Uh, that wasn't really the intention, I guess, uh, of coming on here. Did you have a particular intention? Uh, the... Well, <laughs> the, I guess two. One was to, one, meet you, because I am a fan. Uh, okay. Two, um, I guess the, there's the, the nervousness about everything relating to what happened, like being here now, as in the, the Twitch environment and... Mm -hmm what that means and mm -hmm. the the i guess the terrifyingness of what comes after because with such a sudden explosion on such a um a game that has no business being as popular as it does the the moment that comes after what happens next after that game is finished is terrifying what's terrifying about that um the why do people fully watch me i guess because i don't feel that particularly entertaining i guess and i don't understand why um to this degree this happened for the position i'm in now yep okay 
So I think there's an important word there and and my my I'm I'm getting kind of like an interesting direction which I'd like to pose to you now. So you said you don't understand. So sometimes when like you don't know you don't understand what comes next. So and that's actually what I'd like to focus on today. So sometimes when people come on they're struggling with a particular emotion or like problem and and our goal is to sort of help them like see things in a new light. In a sense it's understanding, but I think it's more of like an emotional understanding. In your case, five up, what I would say is that uh, you are what I would call spiritually gifted. And what I okay. mean by that is that like you're one of these people that is actually for whatever reason has a fair amount of detachment kind of baked into you. So what we talk about and what we try to encourage in this channel is for people to teach people how to become detached. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I know this sounds kind of weird, but like, so sometimes, you, you know, like, I, I mean, I don't give people like clinical diagnoses, but my sense of people is that, okay, this person has anxiety holding them back, or this person has shame holding them back, or you know, this person like is an incel because they have a low value of themselves or whatever. The interesting thing is that, that in your case, I, I think for whatever reason, you have a certain amount of detachment baked into you. And what I mean by detachment is that, you know, a, a lot of human beings live lives that they're like very attached to stuff. So sometimes that's material stuff. Sometimes it's relationships. Sometimes it's like goals and ambitions. But I don't get the sense that you're particularly ambitious. I don't get the sense that you're particularly like, um, you, you know, hung up on something emotionally. I, I think you just sort of are generally like kind of content and kind of happy. And if anything, you're just trying to figure out like how all this stuff works. Like you're not, bu but, but your, your, your desire to figure out how things work is not like, out of a desire to like change something. So a lot of times like understanding is born of like desperation. So I'm tired mm -hmm. of feeling this way. So I need to understand how to stop feeling this way. You just seem to sort of be like kind of chilling and, and are like, you know, life is relatively easy for you. Um, I don't get the sense that you're particularly attached to like academic accomplishments. Although it sounds like you could be quite accomplished if you really put your mind to it, but you seem to be, relatively uninterested um you're one of these rare people that seems like you went to work after high school but like that was also like i'd guess that you were relatively successful as a graphic designer yeah i didn't have a um a reason to go to college where any field that i want to go into or wanted to go into didn't really require that education yeah so see th that's kind of interesting because that's very rare right so very few people say I'm not going to go to college because it doesn't suit me. So most people are actually like, you know, have either a lack of like internal sense of direction to where they go out, go to college out of like insecurity and like not being sure what they want to do in life, or they go because that's what they're supposed to do. Like you just sort of have your own internal compass that seems to be a little bit, you know, um slick when it comes to like the world wanting you to do things like it just the world wanting you to do things just sort of doesn't latch on to you does that make sense yeah how how uh, much do, do you think that what i'm saying actually is accurate to kind of your who you are in your life i think um i want to uh, like my mind says, I want to say you're like completely accurate, but <laughs> I, I want to say 95%. <laughs> like there might be some room for error. Um, but I'd say, yeah, very accurate. Okay. So I think oddly enough, so, so this is going to be an interesting conversation, Five Up, because I, I don't think it's going to be about like, so some people are drawing correlations between you and destiny. And some people are sort of saying that like, you know, this sounds a lot like destiny. Like he doesn't experience a whole lot of emotion. F frankly, I, I don't, I don't think you're similar to destiny at all. I don't. So, so some people I think have emotional suppression. I don't think you have emotional suppression or may, I mean, maybe you've got some, but I, I don't think you're like, you know, there's some treasure trove of negative emotion that you've tucked so far away within yourself that like, 
you know, that's what we have to dig up. I think you're just kind of confused and you're different from other people and, and you're not really sure like how to systematically understand yourself better or like what to do with your life. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Uh... I don't know how to respond to that. I, I mean, besides, like, I want to I want to give a better response than just yeah. I think that very nail on the head. But I don't know like what to say. That's okay. So so just just say so. You don't have to offer more. I I just want you to offer. If, if it's a nail on the head, it's a nail on the head, right? So then then it's going to be weird because I'm going to guide the conversation because. But first, we have to like establish. Um. Uh, we have to just establish that we're on the same page about what we're talking about and what direction to go. Mm -hmm. Right. So like, I'm just trying to like nail this down very clearly that I don't think I'm going to try to dig into your negative emotions from your childhood. Cause I don't think there's a whole lot to find there. No. Okay. So, um, so then, so let's just talk about this. So can you tell me a little bit, uh, I, I, just, I do want to understand a little bit more about your upbringing. So can you tell me a little bit about your parents? Um, sure. So the graphic design side was, that is a business that my mom's side runs. Oh, I'm getting a call in a second. Let me just, <laughs> give me two seconds. Sorry about that. I just muted everything. I turned it off. Um, yeah, so for my... Uh, mom's side of stuff, she runs the, her own graphic design business, and it's more of like a work at home, very specialized type of thing where I'm not going to say what exactly we do and what we work on, because it's very easy to find uh, if you know, but we do a lot of stuff for like specialized industries relating to either music or big uh conferences and uh hotels and advertisement stuff and then for my dad's side it's um he's very accomplished in the rock climbing scene where like two very 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 different uh personalities and sides of upbringing where um i guess i got to experience like one side where we didn't have like any money and we're struggling on that side and then mom's side a lot more uh frugal i guess and it was the the dynamic of going from nothing to a little bit of something and just switching back and forth and seeing both sides of that i guess um then I'm trying to think of how much I want to say. Um, Let's talk about this for a second. Why? Why mm -hmm. the hesitation? Why do you think so carefully about what you want to say? For this topic in particular, or yeah, just uh, this topic, and also like you know, it sounds like you're very concerned about revealing something. What is it that you're trying to protect? I'm not I'm not trying to get you to say anything about it. I just want to understand what your motivations are. Oh, um I guess it's also pertaining to um why I don't show my face where I don't want to have people find uh, relating back to I guess me being friends with streamers before I streamed on Twitch for years. Whenever I went out with them, um, they would get recognized all the time. Didn't matter where they were. And the the thought of loss of privacy is, is something I don't I don't want at all. Where okay. I want to be able to do what I want to do and not have to um be forced to just lose that, I guess. Okay, and so you're just it's just protection of privacy. For protection of privacy and then there is like how much do i want to say about um it's privacy for one side and then it's like very 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 personal things for the other what does that mean for the other um 
So like relating to why I didn't like go into detail about what my mom's company does, uh, that's more of the keeping privacy side of things. And then for like why I'm hesitating on the other is this like personal events that happen that are like, I don't think I want to reveal at that moment or like go too much into. Uh, personal events like that happened in your upbringing? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. Were you, uh, did you grow up in a particular uh, religious tradition? No. Um, mm, <laughs> there, there was an event that caused my dad's, or my dad to become very religious where he wasn't at all into very religious. Um, and then my mom said not at all. Okay. Um, have you had people in your life, Five Up, who understand you? Yeah. A few. Like, do do people, like, understand, like, have you met anyone like you? Similar. I can think of three people. You can think of three people. Any of them, like, older than you? Um... I'd say two of them are. Like substantially? One's two years old. Two years older than me. The other one is four years older than me. Okay. Then the other one is um I'm older than him by a few months. Okay. And how did you get to be friends with a bunch of streamers? Um how did that happen? If you <laughs> Ooh, it, it, a combination of a few things, I guess, where I, I assume you know what League of Legends is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I peaked at Challenger in that game, and that in suit just goes with um, you, you meet streamers from, like, I, I, I hate saying this, but like Challenger is essentially like, all right, you, you are a person, you can talk to who you want to because that is the social status, and then the the other side is like i had a friend that i'm not going to say who uh i had a friend that got popular on the raj patel show now known as like the austin or Levin host whatever it's called um that no longer goes on there and she introduced me to a lot of streamers i guess and i became friends with them and how did you feel about that what was it like being friends with streamers um I never really looked at it like that. It was more, I've always tried to just become friends with people that are fun. I've never been one to get like starstruck or nervous around people, I mm -hmm. guess. Mm -hmm. I think that makes sense. Um, did you ever think about the value it could bring being friends with these people? Yeah. I mean, that was partially in the back of my head and it makes me feel bad but mm -hmm. um yeah there there is an element of like well uh i i have friends that are in the scene and i have more opportunities to do some fun things uh i didn't think uh the streaming was like a potential but i didn't want to feel like i would take advantage of that situation i wanted more to do it on myself if i wanted to stream the streaming was never really a um a thing I thought to pursue. Okay. Five of what do you want to do with your life? Uh <laughs> I I've wanted to I, I said I've wanted to do what I want is the best way to put it. Where I, I want to spontaneously do um just random goals that I have, whether it be travel to a bunch of locations um, and explore um, all of Europe or Asia versus um, maybe open a very, very nice bakery somewhere in Europe or um, become very uh, skilled at uh, cooking or pastry side of that. Um, but overall, just like have fun and do what I want has always been my goal in life.
I think that would be a waste. Interesting. Why so? So you were born with a really good set of RNG, five up. <laughs> and I think that that if you're born born with a good set of RNG, you've got two options. Right? One is just kind of coast. And you sort of live a life of indulgence, right? You mm -hmm. learn, you get good at things, like things that are respectably indulgent. But you do things like you travel, you master skills because you have the talent and proficiency to do so. Like something tells me that, you know, here we've got a 21-year-old kid who's challenger in League of Legends and a very successful streamer after like three months of streaming. And if you, uh, something tells me if you wanted to master becoming a pastry chef, you would. So when you put your mind to something, it sounds like it ten your mind tends to generally speak and do what you want it to do. Um, you know, you have a certain amount of self direction and and you know it's you sound kind of OP five up. <laughs> um I I guess, but I the the I don't know how to respond to that. I'll be honest. Um, That's okay. I I don't know what. What, what do you mean by it would be? Oh, like are are you saying that? For like you think it'd be better for me to pursue a like I, I don't know a, a field or I I don't generally know what you mean by it would be a waste. Yeah, I I get that, and so we're gonna talk about that in a second. Yeah, okay. So here's here's what I think would be a waste. So like, okay. So five up. I think this will make a lot more sense if I give you just some actual context. So in the Karmic religions like Hinduism and Buddhism, they believe in the principle of cause and effect. Okay, so that's what karma means. So karma means that for each action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. That all things that happen have causes. And that all things... And that all causes lead to happenings. You with me so far? Yes. Okay. So then let me ask you a question. If you got a good RNG, like you spawned with a good seed, okay? Like, you know, I'm talking about like RNG seed from like roguelikes. You with yes. Me? Okay. So if you spawn with a good seed. So let, let me start by asking you this question, okay? So we're going to like philosophize a little bit, which is not something I do often on stream, but I think it's actually probably what you need because I imagine you have these kinds of thoughts a lot. So... Um, so do you think that cause and effect is a universal principle of existence, or do you think that it is, it is limited and that some causes exist without effects and that some effects are not preceded by causes? Uh, definitely the second one. So give me an example of an effect that is not preceded by a cause. Where does um... cause and effect break down? So, I mean, causes uh, inspired by uh, a person wanting to make a change or motivation or something happen. And a person can pursue that and do that for... Uh, this, is a, this is more on the negative side of thinking, but it, it's still an example of it doesn't necessarily always, because you said some potential parts. Um, so the cause that they are trying to make an effect happen from doesn't sometimes amount to anything. That's like not that's a, that's a very negative way of looking at it, where there's also the complete opposite, where a person can strive out to do something and make a change, and that change will actually have a great effect. Um, but you, you can't, or at least I don't look at it like that is a guarantee. No, well, well, yeah. So, so the question is, is there an effect? It's not that oh. there's a particular effect, right? So, like, for example, 
so I, I'll just be transparent. So I believe that, um, you know, causes have effects and that effects have causes. So mm. it's been my experience, generally speaking, as a scientist, that barring some very rare situations, the laws of physics don't randomly break down. Okay. From that perspective, I agree with you. Right. So like, like even if I have a, a motivation or intention to do something and the thing doesn't happen, that doesn't mean that my actions don't have effects. It just means that the effect that I wanted was not achieved. So that's different. It's like kind of saying if I roll a, a pair of dice and I want an 11, just because I want an 11 doesn't mean that once I roll the dice, they're not going to land on a particular number. Like, once I roll the dice, the dice will land on some number. Mm hmm So, does that... Are you with me? Yeah, no, I follow you. So, so just because the... You, you know, I'm not saying that you can necessarily control a particular outcome. In fact, the opposite. But what I'm saying is that all things come from somewhere. Like, it's impossible to get a plant without a seed. And generally speaking... Well, I mean, not all plants, but not all seeds will go, grow into plants, right? So there are a number of things that can influence whether a seed winds up growing into a plant or not. But once again, you can look at each of those seeds and you can kind of say that, like, the reason for this effect is because of particular causes. Like, if I put a seed in, you know, in a metal box, it's not going to turn into an apple tree. Mm -hmm. Right, because no, the, for, yeah. the sufficient causes are not there. With me? Yes. Okay. So, so from, from that perspective, completely agree with uh, every cause has an effect. Okay. So, so then let me ask you this. Do you think your birth has antecedent causes? What? Go into more what antecedent means. So, like, is your birth influenced by prior causes? I mean, yeah. Okay, which ones? Uh, I mean, <laughs> I guess just me being born. Sure. Uh, sex, like. Sure, absolutely, right? And so your makeup is influenced by what? Uh, I mean, like the genetics the, of the parents. Absolutely, right? Now, what about your parents' financial situation? Would you consider huh. that to be a cause that determines who you are? No, I, I wouldn't say so. Or really? Not to a, a specific degree, where I've always been allowed to do whatever I want. Uh -huh. um, and when it comes to, like, if I wanted to do something as in travel or... Uh, get anything, I'd have to work for that. So okay. it was own effort to get what I want, I guess. Where sure. I did have a um, a more privileged side, at least on my mom's side. Um, but I don't think money has... I mean, it has shown me more potentials in the world. So on that aspect, yes. Where I've been given more opportunities to see stuff and that uh, there's inspiration. To and motivation to do other things, but I don't right. think money so, is fully the influence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but I I I I think you're a, actually I I didn't answer the question. I I didn't ask the question clearly. But your answer implies to me that 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 and that the answer is yes. So let me put it this way. You know, part of who you are today is because of your genetics. Mm -hmm. Part of who you are today is the financial situation that your parents brought you up in. Yes. Right? So so if you're... I'm not saying that you're money-oriented or that or anything like that. I'm not making a particular claim about how the dice landed. All I'm saying is that there are a number of things that kind of influence and drive into who you are in this moment. And so some of that is genetics, right? So those are some aspects of your being that are essentially determined before you were born. Fair? Mm-hmm. And then there are all these other, like, nurture aspects. But those, in turn, are determined by, like, your parents. Because your parents have a slew of experiences. 
and then they share certain principles or values with you. And those in turn are like built on their own experiences, which in turn are, are influenced by their genetics and their upbringing and on and on and on. Make mm -hmm. sense? Yes. Okay. So then the question is like, okay, so like you are what you are. And then the question is like, what do you do with the seed that you're given? And so this is where I'm going to make a claim. So, so far, I feel like I've been on pretty standard footing or pretty solid foundation. And I feel like if you disagreed, I could, you know, make a convincing argument. Whether I can bring you mm -hmm. around to it or not is a different story. Now I'm going to go out on a limb. Okay. So this is where like I'm on shaky ground. So it's been my experience that from a so this is where like now we get into sort of the spirituality or the religious aspect of it where it becomes harder to elucidate logically although in my experience if you spend enough time and energy exploring it you'll come to this conclusion so there's like this idea of like good karma and bad karma which i think is actually false there's no such thing as good karma and bad karma karma is just karma energy is just energy and cause and effect is just cause and effect it's we as human beings who apply our own value system onto karma. So it is because we desire particular effects that we say that something is better than something else. With me so far? Yes. Okay. And so what I'm going to say, though, is that like it's been my experience that people who are born with a good seed can go one of two directions. They either use that seed for themselves or they use that seed for others. What do you think about this? Yeah, I mean, I agree. It's just up to the motivation of that person and the how much effort they want to put into it. Yep. And so I think... So I think part of the reason that you did, you got this seed is because of your past karma. And I think that you've got an interesting choice because I think if you go the route that you were talking about in terms of like learning lots of skills and doing cool stuff and traveling the world, I think your life will be a little bit of a waste. Okay. That's a provocative statement. How yeah. do you, how, how do you feel about that? In, in in some senses it's like if I I feel like people in general have um a talent and they you can do something to make a little bit of a difference or a massive difference depending on uh things that you uh, put yourself out to do and some people are going to be better at that. Some people can contribute a lot to the, uh, I guess, society or um, I'm just going to use society. There's obviously a, a bunch of words or different types of things I could describe. Um, and while that is true, I feel like learning a bunch of different skills and applying it in not necessarily just like a, a make a difference to the world um is a, a needed or not I, I needed isn't the correct word is uh i don't want to be for example a politician um i don't want to be a a pub like I, I don't know a public speaker or a motivator i guess so well that i i could be i guess it's uh it's hard for me to say, like, is that what you're telling me to do? Is that? No, I'm not telling you to do any of those things. I'm also not telling you to become a doctor or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So here's here's I think what I'm telling you is is really just to introduce this concept, because I think for I think you should do everything that you have said. But I think that I'm just kind of introducing the idea that. You know, you've got a really good RNG. And so, like, the world is going to, like, you, you, you basically have a fork in the road of, like, your life, right? You can live a life where you tend to focus on yourself, or you can live a life where you improve the lives of others. 
Now, I'm not saying that those two are mutually exclusive. I'm not saying that becoming a pastry chef won't be the way in which you give back to other people. I don't think it looks like anything particular. What I'm really trying to do here, and this is hard, um, a five up, is that I I'm trying to get you to think about things because I don't know if you've quite been exposed to some of these concepts. Hmm. And and that's really the goal is like, I, I think it's like, I think if you want to travel the world, you absolutely should. If you want to focus on yourself for a while, that's actually totally fine too. But I, I think that when, when I ask you, you know, what do you want? It's essentially to kind of, you're kind of saying, I want to do what I feel like, which is a very good goal. But at some point, having seen people who are somewhat like you and who are also very accomplished, um, they tend to find that their life starts to become like relatively empty mm. at some point. And so what I'm trying to do is actually, since based on our karma, I have the opportunity to talk to you when you're 21. I've talked to you when you were 30 and I've talked to you when you're like 45 and I can tell you where you're going to end up with a lot of confidence because I've talked to people who are you when they're 30 years old. And they've built a company that's worth $20 million and sold it. Hmm. And I've talked to you when you were 45 years old, who built companies that are worth a billion dollars and sold it. And, and I just want to introduce the concept because I don't think you have a good... So it's not that you don't have a... You have a good internal compass, but, but I, I think you could really benefit from experiences and a system of knowledge that is sort of like hard uh does doesn't apply to most people which is essentially like some of these like uh eastern texts on spirituality and sort of the nature of happiness and stuff like that because as i said before i think you're spiritually gifted so you have a natural degree of a certain amount of detachment you also like tend to operate in terms of accomplishment like relatively effortlessly like, it seems like if you really want to do something, like you said, you know, when you were in fifth grade, you would do all your homework at the beginning of the week. And it doesn't sound like anyone sat you down to try to do that. Yeah. It, right. Um, which, which if you think about our audience, especially our audience at Healthy Gamer, people would kill for that. They work their entire, they spend years of their life trying to get themselves to do things, do things like do their work on Monday and then be free the rest of the week. And instead what they do is they like procrastinate and suffer and push it back and play games for five days and then like panic on Friday. And it's the same amount of effort. It's just one is relatively like fun and effortless. And then like the other is like fraught with anxiety, procrastination and shame. Hmm. And, and so I don't even, it, it's kind of weird five up. Cause I, I kind of feel like you need to just like, I, I think if you study Eastern spirituality and I don't mean from an academic sense, I mean, in the way that you study things, which is like very, very practically, then I think you'll learn a lot about yourself and like what you should do with your life. Okay. I'll, hmm. I'll actually write that down. Just so I don't forget and something I can always look back to. Eastern spirituality. Sure. I'll send you more concrete recommendations after the talk. If you could, that'd be very nice. Yep. I have a couple of things particularly in mind. All right. Thank you. Um, what do you think about this conversation? Um, it's a little bit intimidating. I think is a good way to put how I'm feeling where I get what you mean. Uh, I, I think I have a better understanding of what you meant by it was a waste, I guess, or it would be a potential waste. Um, more so now after you went into that side. Um, What's intimidating about the conversation? Hmm the i guess everything that goes into um doing something very large yeah so this is exactly what you need to learn man it doesn't have to be large right so like you could become a pastry chef 
and you could run a little bakery in some small town in Europe. And that can be actually completely sufficient. It could be perfect. Right? Like, like if, if what you devote yourself to is making delicious pastries that enrich the lives of people, and, like, that's what you put all of your focus into, I think it's fine. I don't think you have to, you know, do something grand. You don't have to save the world. It's just about, and this is what's so hard to explain 5UP, is it's not about the outward action. Forget about the outward action. It's about what's going on on the inside. It's about what your intention is and what your mindset is. It's about, like, you know, that internal compass that drives you to act. The action stuff you've gotten taken care of, like, that's not a big deal. And mm -hmm. so the, the manifestation, I think, is, is actually somewhat irrelevant. I mean, it's not irrelevant, but you'll figure out what that is. The point is, like, what what is on the inside, right? Like, what do you, what do you, like, when you wake up and you, because you're, you're, it's kind of interesting because you're halfway there. So, so, you know, what's your intention when you start to bake something? Um, I think you might be focusing on the baking side a little bit much, as in that, that's just a... Uh, I, I guess a goal or not a goal, no. just a, a potential pursuit where at some point I think it'd be fun to do that. And then after that, I would pursue something else uh, after I was finished with that, whether that be, um, I mean, I guess another goal is be trilingual. Um, just, so, I, I don't so, want to so, so only focus on one thing. F five up. I, I'm, I'm not focusing on, I'm just using it as a placeholder because I don't know what else to say. Okay. Right. So so my point is that it doesn't matter whether you're a teacher, a doctor, a streamer or a baker. That's my whole point is that like I, I, this, I know this is kind of hard to understand, but your battles are going to be internal. They're not going to be external. Does that make sense? Yeah. So like I don't care what it looks like. That's why I'm saying you don't have to like start something grand. Like forget about the outside world. Right. Because like that shit is mm -hmm. like, you know. You started th stream, st streaming three months ago, and you have five to 10,000 concurrents. Were you in the right place at the right time? Sure. Did you cultivate it? Absolutely. Hmm. I think I, like, 70% understand you, and I, I feel okay. bad that I don't fully. What do you, um, what do you see? Like, I, I, it's, it's interesting to hear how self-aware you are. Right? Like you have a good understanding of, you kind of say that this is intimidating, fair, and yet you're able to tolerate it. You're able to gauge what you understand and what you don't understand. So tell me what you do understand and tell me what you don't understand. I think I get at what you're trying to, uh, I guess, uh, let me know or like try and open another perspective on it. Um, the the thing that I'm I, I guess struggling is when when you respond with like the the you were just using the the baking thing as an example and you're more trying to like open up like what do I want to do internally I guess um or the the internal side of it it's like in my mind at least when I say like I want to do what I want that's like already somewhat the internal stuff of i'm not just mm -hmm. going to lay about do like yeah. I'm, I'm going to do stuff i guess mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and whether how easy or how hard or how that makes me feel like i i'm going to do stuff that'll be challenging to me i'm going to do stuff that's easy and fun um so that's why i guess i'm confused when you said like or why, why I'm not gathering when you're saying that I'm not fully there for it's, understanding it, that. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good point, five up. And if anything, the deficiency is on, is on my end because what I'm doing is telling you, I'm trying to, I'm being unfair with you because what I'm doing is injecting conversations that I've had, like I said, with 30-year-old you and 45-year-old you to attempt to guide 21-year-old you. And the problem is that 21-year-old you hasn't had that degree of experience, so it's like kind of confusing. It's mm. probably a mistake on my part. But let, let me put it this way. So let me ask you this, okay? So I, 
So let's say you were talking to a streamer who had just blown up, but the streamer is concerned that their stream has a certain amount, uh, like a certain lifespan to it, right? They're like, I stream this particular game. It's really popular right now, and I don't know what comes next. What would you say to them? Okay, that makes more sense now. Uh... <laughs> If the streamer's worried, I'm pretty much what you're doing is the streamer's worried about the lifespan. You give them um, the nudge of like what they can do, um, ways to either help sustain it or what they can do after that or what they've created, I guess. Um, or uh, other things to do in the solution behind it. Okay. Is and are you doing that stuff? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I'm. I, I'm doing a mixture of. I so is this relating back to myself as in like giving self advice or like what I'm doing no, currently? No, to... d d no, so I'm just saying like so so here's okay. Mm, this is top five up. Okay, so let me let me start with this. So like you say you're terrified of what's going to happen after Among Us. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't think you're actually that worried about it. Um, I, I, there is a degree of worry where sure. It, it's not like, I don't think I'm going to go from 10,000 to zero. I don't think that will be a thing. Cause that doesn't make sense in terms of where things are, but there is the, um, uh, I guess the, the self-conscious aspect of I know a lot of people watch me because I'm good at the game and it, it's I tr tend not to like think about numbers um, but when you compare like Among Us to if say I stream a different game it's hard to I mean that, that is like there's a there's a jump now I've taken the step in trying to I guess introduce people to more sides of what I do but it's still a very big intimidation, or not intimidation, I, I keep saying that word. It, it's daunting, I guess. Yeah, so what you if do... you went from 10,000 to zero, five up, how would you feel about that? <laughs> I'd feel pretty sad about it. Um, not relating to like... damn, I really want to be a streamer, and it sucks that I killed my stream. It'd be more like, wow, I guess people didn't find me entertaining and really only watched me for this, and that'd make me feel sad. And where would you be a year from then? Um, if streaming died completely, YouTube died completely, I would probably pursue a degree in Denmark from some stuff that I've earned from streaming, and try and pursue uh, education from their kids. I mean, this is a goal that I've, I've wanted to move to Denmark for a very long time. And so I would use what I've gotten from streaming to help me with uh, getting there as a goal. And okay. whether it be. So like, this is kind of my point, right? So man, this is so hard. I'm, I'm sorry, five up. I, I may, I may need to take another crack at you later, but so like, this is my point. So like, if your streaming career ended in dumpster fire, mm -hmm. I think you would be fine in a year. I think you would okay. continue moving along the goals that you've set for yourself. Yeah, okay. If your streaming career was successful, I think you'd do the same thing. Like, here's what I think you think about your streaming career. And when I make statements like this, I, I'm I'm giving you an opportunity to tell me that I'm wrong, okay? So I don't want you to, mm -hmm. like... Uh, by all means, say you have no idea what you're talking about, Dr. K. So, like, here's, like, I think that you recognize that you have an opportunity and you're going to make the most of this opportunity. And something of your identity and your ego is kind of getting confused because I think you had a pretty clear sense of who you were before this whole thing happened and that this streaming thing is, like, kind of a weird stress or pressure where you still have a pretty good sense of your identity, but it's starting to get maybe a little bit muddy. 
And then like at the end of the day, like your compass is your compass. And if you have a good opportunity, you're going to take advantage of it. And you're going to make the most of it. And you're going to try to make it do what you can out of streaming because it's like, it'd be dumb if you didn't. But I don't hear that you're caught up in the idea of being a streamer. I don't hear that it's actually important. To you. It's just a means to an end. Uh, the way I've looked at streaming is I've always decided like like I said in the beginning I wasn't I didn't have the intention of being a streamer it just sort of happened and I told people in the beginning um I'm going to stream if people want to watch me and be a means of entertainment um and then maybe form a nice community about it and then if people didn't watch me then I would go on about it so while I am saying that from where I am now going from a big number to zero is daunting. It's it's that wasn't the this hasn't been something that I've like worked my whole life towards, I guess. Like a lot of people, it's their aspiration and their like life's desire to be a streamer. Um where I, I just didn't go through that. I don't have the attachment of trying to like I, I guess make this work like other people have. It just sort of happened, and here I am. Right. So, so, okay, I don't even know what I'm trying to say at this point. Let me just think about this for a second. Do you have questions, Five Up? That would probably focus my mind a lot. Um, give me a second. Let me think. <laughs> I'm on the spot. It's hard to think of a question. Um, it's okay. Mm. I guess... What do you what do you do? Because you you have a lot of influence, especially for what you provide, and especially being a doctor or therapist or um, this means like what do you do with the amount of influence that you have, and how do you like fully control it? Because I think you you do a very good job at helping people and educating the public and making people have a better mindset uh, or way of thinking and. It's very hard for me to even realize the influence because it's also new. I don't know how to control it. That's like, I guess I got into a big drama in the middle of me streaming, I guess, with XQC, for example. Um, what happened? Uh, so I guess during an Among Us lobby, um, I had the intention of going to a specific group, but I saw one group was forming uh, like a lot earlier. So I was going to play in that group uh, and then swap to the other group when that time frame happened. This group happened to be the, the prior group, the early one that I was going to swap through later was the one with Felix. And then um, how much do you know about Among Us? I've played it once. Played it once. Okay. For like an hour and a half. Gotcha. Let's just say I am. You you've spoken to me for like an hour or so now. I think you probably gathered that I'm like heavily logical thinker. That side, um, I will try and have a conversation and try and like provide my side of it, and that might come off as arrogant because I think, at least from the logical side, and I have a giant amount of experience when it comes to deception based games because I've played, do you know what Mafia is, for example? Yeah. Okay, I've played Mafia in a hyper-competitive scenario or hyper-competitive environment for like five years. So like that was just, that trained me for Among Us, I guess, for the, the social side. Um, and then mechanics from, I guess, league transfer over, or I guess games. So it, I, I people deem me as a very good player, I guess. Um, 
in Among Us. Interesting karma there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, so when I go at it versus Felix, it was like just the clash of he, I, I guess, intentions of how to play the game, where in the old game, um, you used to be able to confirm if a person is imposter or a crewmate just by looking at the task bar at the top. And I felt that defeated the, the purpose of the game in general, because it's no longer a social deduction game. It's more just, I'm going to look at a person do this, and the game mechanics instantly confirms who all the imposters are and who all the crewmates are. I, as a person who is intention is like streaming the game for entertainment. Um, my goal is like for all the streamers to have fun and the audience to have fun because there's what, like 200,000 people watching uh, across all of the streamers. So when that happened and I just, I I'm known as like one of the best imposters in the game in general, uh, that causes me to get voted out consistently. It doesn't matter if I'm good or bad. Um, and that got heavily on my nerves and he got he gets hyper competitive um so eventually just left me to leaving the lobby after a few scenarios where i call him imposter explain why and then he's i guess shit talking and it was a consistent thing where that entire uh thing annoyed me and um i eventually just left he said a bunch of things uh and continued to speak about it after i even left i said my piece of what i thought of the situation that heavily blew up um, on live stream fails, got onto like random gaming web articles, was on Snapchat, uh, and just caused like a really, really shitty dynamic. What does um, that mean, shitty dynamic? Where if you do anything wrong, text you see, his chat will brigade you. Um, and that is what like people only knew me for for a month. And was like it, it feels awkward. Uh, it felt awkward for a while. It's like I can't play any game with him, and because you're gonna get brigaded by his chat. Uh, well, it's not like people were on my side, and now you have uh, his chat defending him, but everyone else shitting on him, and then it's like if I play in a lobby with him, there's going to be no matter what me versus him um and i like I, I among us is 10 people and i want to play with my friends but he also plays with my friends um so it it was just that whole situation was really bad so how does that make you feel well it made me feel bad <laughs> i didn't like that way? at all what did you feel bad about um th there were two things one I am a hyper competitive person also, so I understand that, but I have never been one to rage. Um, but I'm very understanding of like who XQC is and why he's like that. And I didn't find it like I I didn't want there to be a rift or a weird dynamic, but I knew the chat would cause it. So if it was just like if me and him were it was just like a one on one or just playing with friends, it, it wouldn't matter. Um I, we would just both move on and it'd be fine. But because there is a bunch of other people talking about it, looking about it, causing a bunch of trouble, he got tons of hate for it. Um, Cause everyone made him look out to be like this, the worst guy in the world. Uh, and I felt bad about that. And I mean, train talked to me about like how the bigger streamer pretty much no matter what gets the fault just because of the audience. Um, and that's not necessarily true for everything. But the more people you have, the more people there are to shit on you. And so there was the combination of, I don't think I was in the wrong, yet I also feel bad about the situation that happened. And that's also why I wanted to like, how do I control an audience? Because I don't want that to happen again. Okay. So um, my answer is going to be somewhat disappointing, but I, you, you don't. Right? So like, let's just talk about what you're saying. So how do you control the behavior I, I mean, I'm going to give you a more satisfying answer in a second, but the short answer, and it's really important to understand this, is that you don't, right? Like, I, I can't control mm -hmm. toxicity. Like, I don't control what someone else does. Like, I can't control what someone else does. Now, there are a lot of practical things that will, people will tell you that you can sort of cultivate a particular kind of chat, and we work very hard to do that. So you can have, you know, mods that 
have low tolerance towards certain kinds of behaviors and things like that. For sure, they're practical things. But in, in the essence of it, I want you five up to take a step back from like controlling another human being. And now you may not agree with that because I, I think you probably are really good at hurting other people. I, I said herd, H E R D. I, I heard. I probably, not I probably H-E-R-D. didn't. Right? So, yeah. so I, I think you're good at that. But like, be really, really careful about what you actually expect from yourself. And just because you tend to be pretty good at like hurting other people into doing what you want to, doesn't mean that you can actually control them. And the bizarre thing is, I think that it's the understanding that you can't control someone that in and of itself is one of the most useful things in influencing them. Because once you acknowledge that you can't control another person, once you cede that power over to your audience, you also can kind of like influence them in the purest way, which is to like give them an offer. Mm-hmm. So what I try to do is is cultivate a particular like attitude and I model particular behavior and with a lot of help from mods we sort of encourage a certain we cultivate right so you can't control someone but you can absol- absolutely cultivate behavior It's mm-hmm. the difference between control and cultivation Yeah I I didn't want to say con- or control i guess like that's not how i felt about it. i don't want to control people it, it's i guess influence is the better word yeah so 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 and i think you use the word influence actually in your question and and so i just want to kind of uh, maybe i'm belaboring a useless point but so then the next thing is that i i think like you can just model right the appropriate behavior mm-hmm. and and so I mean, I think that's the most that you can do. But frankly, this sounds to me like a hazard of like being a streamer on Twitch, right? Because <laughs> you've got a community and he's got a community and y'all are going to get into it. It sounds to me like you're choosing your words very comparely, uh, carefully because you said the word competitive like 15 times. And it sounded to me like that was code for something else. Mm. Um, but I, I mean, it, I, I mean, I haven't figured out how to avoid Twitch drama. If that if that's your if that's what your real question is. Um. Yeah, I mean, there. Uh, for for me, uh, I, I am carefully saying what I say. Um, yeah, I can tell. Just I I don't I, I don't want to get into a situation like that pretty much ever again. I don't want to say something that wouldn't or like give people. A wrong impression or i'll try to correct that wrong impression as soon as i think i might have given it um but but i i think five up so maybe here i can give you some concrete advice and then i'll try to i'll try to like circle back to what on earth i was trying to say for the last hour um mm-hmm. but l- let me say this so i think when you choose your words very very carefully i think people can tell and i think if anything it highlights like something weird Right. So, so, so I think sometimes being transparent and authentic and kind of accepting of things is actually like way better from a drama reduction standpoint than being like choosing your words super carefully. I feel like that's somewhat hard to do because it is hard to do. So, so like, I think like, for example, if I, if I had to say, If I was in your situation, here's how I would tell the story. So Felix and I were in an Among Us game. We're both fucking competitive. He got super fucking toxic. I got super fucking toxic. I thought I was less toxic than he was. We got into it. Our chat started yelling at each other. Now the internet hates him. And his chat hates me. And I like Felix, and I want to be able to play with him, but it's fucking awkward every time we're in the lobby now. And I just want to be able to play the game. And I think he just wants to be able to play the game. And I wish everyone would fucking calm, calm the fuck down. <laughs> well, there, there's, the, there's the side of me also that it's like, I have my opinions. Um, I don't think what I said was wrong. And I don't think I, what I said was toxic. And I, I will die on that hill. 
Um, <laughs> so it's now, like it's a ah, it, there's the attachment. <laughs> so so it's a matter of like <laughs> I'm not going to just not give out my opinion. Um, and if I say something, I mean everything I say generally. I'm not a toxic person, and I've never been. So that's why that situation bothered me heavily. Yeah, so so I, I think it's taken us about an hour and a half to find which hill you're willing to die on, because that's an attachment. I haven't detected an attachment in you, five up, until this moment. Everything that you've said. <laughs> So now, now the question is, like, why is it so important for you to die on that hill? Um, I, I guess just because I believe what I say. In, and if, if something's bothering me, I will try and say it in a more respectful way. I don't want to, like burn bridges with anyone i don't want to um I, I don't want to teach people from like if i'm in front of people i want to like give them it's okay that like, you don't have to accept an apology or you don't have to say you're sorry i i wanted to say um i i want to stand for what i believe in and if what i think is right i'm gonna say that i'm not gonna say no i'm wrong like that's not how i want to think about things yeah so so i I, oddly enough, I, I think that's okay. So I think it's okay to die on a hill. But l let me just... So I still think you can be transparent about that. Mm. There's a degree of transparency that you can go to where it you can have an opinion about something on Twitch or another person, and it's, it's not good to say that sometimes. Like sure. some people say whatever the fuck they want and go for it. I mean, that's fine. Uh, but I also don't think that's like a good environment at the same time for like having a relationship with people. And if you're no matter what going to be in contact with uh, X person, um, whether that's like in your control or not, just because of the nature. So, of so community and such. L let me be. Let me be. Let me circle back to your original question, Five Up. So you said, mm -hmm. you know, what do you, like? How do you influence people, like in Twitch chat? And my answer was, I would be a little bit more transparent than you're being. So that's okay. my answer. Right. So like, like I agree with you. I mean, I have all kinds of opinions that I don't share. So for everything that I say, there are like nine things that I don't say. So I'm not advocating for like radical honesty. I think that's idiotic. Mm -hmm. So I, I think, but something tells me that, you know, something about the way that you speak, I think Twitch chat. So Twitch chat is like very, very like intuitive. Like they're very smart and they're also like deeply empathic. And I think they sniff out BS. And I think one thing that you do project when you choose your words very, very carefully is it sets people's BS meter off. Hmm. And and so if you want to like calm chat down, it's been my experience that you have to be like honest with them and you have to sort of treat them with respect. Like don't try to pull a fast one over on them because it's not going to work. And just, you know, just and then like if there's something that you stand behind, I think it's OK to say it. Um, and but at the same time, if you feel like it's going to create more drama, then it's a tricky balance. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I I think that, you know, it's hard. Like when you're when you when you play a a tension inducing game like Among Us with streamers, and not everyone is going to be quite as like detached as you are. It's part of what makes them successful, right? Is being emotionally invested in the games that mm -hmm. they play. Like I think this is gonna happen. Yeah. Um That's not my, my, <laughs> I could say this also, um, with what I said with 
regarding XQC in that moment, I would say the same thing again. I don't, I don't have regrets on that. Um, if that tell. arose again uh, with a different person, I would say my opinion on it. Um, what actually happened? I, I, I don't even... Or um, are we not saying that? Oh, what happened was... I... In the for when that whole situation happened, he just every time I played with him, he would vote me out. As in, he they call a button, nobody's dead, and still vote me out. That was how the game was played, and I sat through that um, for two hours on a specific day. On other days, I enjoyed heavily playing with him, but on that day, it was just uh, like already being tilted, just going into it where I have everything uh going for me in a game and then i just get voted out because it was me and it was always him doing it and that got on my nerves and then whenever i call him out it's like he called me like it just discredited everything i said and eventually it left me to leave the lobby i left politely i it, there's there's a video on it i mean i i try to make things as peaceful as an exit as i could and it's just because i left on me catching him and just the whole situation going down horribly and then me saying it after and then that exploding and then i don't want to say some stuff i'd be fine messaging you some stuff but i don't want to say some stuff that's fine um, man. I, I just i was just like you're talking around something and i don't know I, yes I there just, is something i'm talking around and i can't say it uh, that's fine I, don't, I mean you, don't worry about it i mean i i think at the end of the day like so your original question. So it sounds like this was just a mess. Yeah, it was a, it was a disaster, definitely. So, um, uh, but that's not my main worry. That was that was a a battle between him. And that's over with. We've spoken. It's fine. Um, my thing with Twitch chat is there is such a juxtaposition between. Uh, I don't try and hide stuff. Um, I'm I'm being selective what I say right now because it's related to this specific topic. If I'm talking about, like, it, it seems like chat as a whole, it doesn't matter how, like, I'm playing with friends when I play right now. It, it It's, I, I genuinely enjoy, love everyone that I play with right now. Um, but if they do something stupid, it's everyone just in insane um, toxicity towards that streamer. And it, it's the juxtaposition of, like, why why is that happening when there's, like, no hostility in the game in general someone made a mistake it's a game about deception and i can't i i just don't know why that's happening and it's so many people and i it's virtually impossible to control okay so i mean that i have sort of a slightly different answer for so you know i went off on uh, i feel like this conversation has been a lot of tangents that i'm going off on that may not be very relevant to what we're actually talking about or where you are so i apologize for that but I'll share with you something that we try to tell our coaches, um, which is that be careful about judging your own influence. And what I mean okay. by that is that we frequently have the situation where our coaches feel like they get like, they're like, I'm not doing enough for my client. Like my client is still struggling, like they're depressed every day or like they're having trouble finding a girlfriend or whatever. And our coaches meet with people on a weekly basis, weekly basis, and they kind of meet with them week after week after week. And it sort of feels like since the person doesn't have a girlfriend, our coaches can feel very frust not frustrated, but really um, like they're letting down their client. So one of the things that we try to tell them is that, you know, be careful because change happens slowly. And it's very, very hard to judge your impact on something in a short term. So what I would say to you actually five up is that like, you know, if people respond to someone making a mistake with toxicity, you can model the right kind of behavior. And if you chip away at that long enough, you'll start to see a change. The other thing, I mean, you can even use some particular techniques if you really want to get into it, but you can help people understand their toxicity. Mm hmm. And it, it can be as simple as like, hey, everyone is jumping down XQC's throat right now or my throat. Right? It's hard for yourself. But if someone, you know, if someone makes a mistake and everyone jumps on them, you can ask people, hey, I'm, I'm noticing that a lot of people are jumping down this person's throat. 
you know, what's going on there? You can ask an open-ended question, or you can even pull a, a Dr. K and ask, like, how do you guys feel about this person making a mistake? And then as you bring attention and awareness to the behavior, it tends to get better. Like once people realize what they're doing, that they're actually channeling their frustration out on someone else, and if you can bring attention to it, it'll kind of slow down. Okay. I, I mean, I feel like I've done at least that to a degree, and I try to as much as possible. It just doesn't feel like the the result is much, I guess. Right. So that's where you have to think a little bit about what is your... When you say the result doesn't, uh, it doesn't feel like the result as much. So that you have to pay attention to like how calibrated that instrument is and what are your expectations, right? So what's mm. your ability to, to detect change in, in an Among Us game? Are you expecting that patterns that have been reinforced through years of gaming and blaming other people because that's what games tend to make us do are going to be wiped away by one comment? Or a dozen comments? Or comments over the course of three months? No, obviously not. Well, I, I don't know. Right? So what's your expectation on, like, what would change look like? Like, what are you looking for? Um, I just don't want... The, my ideal world, I guess, is if someone makes a mistake in the game, um, whether, I mean, so Hafu is the main person I play with. Um, became really, really good friends with her, um, I guess, through Among Us. And th there is so much blatant, I guess, sexism. Um, like, if she does something that, like, she catches me in a lie, or, um, or if someone makes a dumb play in that lobby, then the chat will just go, like, rampant, like, pure rampage on, like, I hate this person. They caught you. Like it, it, it's people are so invested into what happens towards me in a game where I understand what the game's about. But even when I try to like, I defend people 24 seven, I guess. And that's the biggest, like, I don't, it, it, it's hard to control that. Okay. Is there some way to observe an Among Us game? I mean, watching a stream, I guess. Or what do you mean by observe? like? Are you guys on a Discord call, or like, how does that work? We are on Discord, yes. So, like, everyone who's in the game is on Discord. Yes. Yeah, so we play the round. We're all muted, and then when a body is found, we all unmute and talk in the meeting. And there's no looking at chat during the game because people will say spoilers. So I can't control my chat while I'm alive in the game unless I'm an imposter. So if I'm a crewmate. Like it's all mods responsibility. Um Can I can I actually watch this? Like can I sit in a Discord call with you guys one day? Sure. I don't want to actually play the game. Is there is there like an observer position in the game? You would have to watch a stream. There's no spectator. There's no spectator, okay. I'm just a little bit curious. Now I'm finding myself being curious about what y'all's actual interactions look like. It's like it... anyway. So that that's one thought. Because um, I, I feel like if you wanted more advice about how to handle that, it's just such a unique environment that I don't know. I feel like me just watching it once, I'd actually be able to answer your question way better. Okay. Because I, um... I played, like I said, I played Among Us once. And, and like it was like with our community and like our community is like super healthy. Like everyone cares about each other and shit. So I feel like I didn't even, I haven't been, I haven't seen this world that you're mm -hmm. talking about. I've been in the kiddie pool and you guys are like swimming in the English channel. And it's just yeah, not, was... it's not the same at all. Um, yeah. <laughs> just watch any um, Among Us stream where okay. someone so, gets caught, I guess. So just the reactions. Five up. I, I want to, if it's okay with you, I want to try to circle back and like share something with you in a sensical way before we wrap up. Is that cool? Sure. So a lot of people have been asking, um, you know, I, I kind of early on, I sort of said that I think like you're, you're spiritually gifted and people are kind of confused by what that means. I'm sure you're confused by what that means. So that that's kind of like, I just want to address that for a second. 
and do something mm-hmm. that I, I do uh, kind of rarely, which is like advise you. So five up. So it seems to me like, you know, like I kind of said earlier, you were born with good RNG. So you have a certain kind of like mind. So it sounds like you're intelligent. Um, it sounds like you grew up, you know, I'm not hearing any any inkling of like abuse or anything like that, although maybe it's just really, really well hidden. Um, but I, I'm not hearing that you struggle with any negative emotions or not. Uh, when I say it's not that you don't have negative emotions, it seems like you're pretty good at like kind of processing with them, uh, processing them, dealing with them, things like that. And when I kind of ask you like, OK, what are you going to do in your life? And it, it sounds like you've got a strong internal compass that sort of is like, yeah, college is not actually something that I need to do, so I'm not going to do it. I'm not hearing, I mean, this could be there, but, y- you know, I'm not hearing um, that you in high school were thought that you should go to a place like Harvard or Yale or whatever, or Stanford, and that you were afraid that you wouldn't get in, so you, like, decided not to apply at all. I'm not getting that whiff. Um, it, did you have those kinds of thoughts or feelings? Um... There's a there's a big element of comparing myself to my brother where uh I, I we didn't dive too far into this, I guess, for the school. Um my brother was a complete straight A, like beyond honor student. Um and then because of the, the situations that I learned from like the first eight years of school, I guess, where it didn't matter. Like it, it felt like uh my perception of school was they all taught at least the school that I went to. Um, I live in Arizona. The way the school systems work here is they pay the teachers based off of the grades people get, not just for the students. So a lot of the teachers um, would inflate people's grades just so they get better pay also. So it, it I realized that it was all teaching to the test and not necessarily teaching people. And I heavily disagreed with that. And it made me lose heavy interest in school. So it was, here's my brother getting perfect grades, working hard because he he knew what he wanted to do and that required uh, stuff, like really good grades to get in. And then I just had a complete loss of interest in all of that because of how the system worked. So it wasn't necessarily that I got good grades, um, but it was like, here I am not necessarily doing the best in school but that's off my own volition, but here's my brother doing the best. And it's like, well, I mean, I, there is the pressure from family to do very well. So not necessarily like Harvard, but there is good school. Um, they're like, you know, probably should go to that potentially. Okay. So maybe, maybe I, I, I've misjudged this. I don't think I'm entirely wrong, but that sounds way more of, sometimes what happens so maybe that's worth you know exploring a little bit further unfortunately i i have to get going in a few minutes but it, you know it, it may be far more pedestrian than than i thought um in terms of just you know standard comparison and stuff and i apologize for not exploring that with you i think that um, was also my fault for not like going to that degree because that's definitely important e- yeah, so, but l- let's kind of just circle back to this idea of, like, spiritually gifted, because I still think that that's true. So so then then I, I think the next thing to kind of think about is that, like, you seem to have, you know, streaming success kind of dumped in your lap. Like, you sort of fell into it. Um, and you're kind of, like, focusing on, like, fun for now and things like that. And, and you're kind of like, okay, what am I going to do that'll give me more freedom? What am I going to do that I enjoy and and it seems to me like you kind of just put those together and like you know you move in the direction that is good for your like long-term security and that is like enjoyable i'm not hearing you as the kind of person who will like sacrifice eight years of your life to become a doctor if you don't enjoy doing that right Mm -hmm. and and so the, the other interesting thing is that i i do think you you genuinely have a fair amount of detachment And what I mean by that is that if your streaming career tanked in a year, I think you would be okay with that. You'd sort of be sad because you recognize that you maybe had an opportunity that you missed or you squandered something or or something along those lines. Maybe you screwed up in some way. And so you'd be kind of sad about that. But you'd also be like relatively calculating and sort of think about, okay, how could I do it better next time? But overall, I'm getting the sense that you're going to be okay. And here's here's what I'm 
I would tell you five up. The first thing is that if at some point you feel directionless, you know, I do think that there is a system of exploration of the self and the meaning of life and things like that, which I think may be interesting to you and hopefully helpful, which is sort of like this Eastern perspective on like life and, and karma and things like that. I'm not trying to, you know, say like, you don't have to, it's not about religion. It's just about, um, when I think about religion, I, I tend to think about like belief systems and sort of like, you know, faith and things like that. It's really more, um, uh, an exploration of like how stuff works. It's about understanding what are the different way, like, why are we here? Like, how does this stuff work? What should I do with my life? What is the nature of happiness? Where does happiness come from? Where does desire come from? You strike me as someone who would really, really enjoy and probably benefit from some amount of formal instruction and this kind of stuff. Because I think you figure a lot of this stuff out on your own. And all I'm telling you is that you know, you may like, it's kind of like you're working through the laws of physics on your own. And it's like, hey, by the way, there's a physics textbook you can read, mm. which you should still question, um, you know, and by all means, you should question. It's a big part of it. But I, I think that, you know, you may find a lot of value in that because I, I think that a lot of the common wisdom may not apply to you because I think you're different, five up. Um. And for people that I've I've met who are sort of like you, they tend to find a lot of solace and direction in some of these texts. The next okay. thing that I would say to you is that I think that you're going to sort of gradually feel empty if you continue this path for a long time. I don't think you should deviate from it now. But what I mean is that right now you're sort of leaning towards the next strategically best thing that fills you with the most enjoyment from day to day the thing that challenges you the most, the thing that gives you a sense of mastery. And you're going to do that, right? Like you said, you're going to do baking for a little while and then like, don't get too caught up in baking because I'm going to move on to something. Agree. Mm -hmm. You're going to learn three languages. You're going to learn how to bake. You're going to stream some. And then you'll get to be 25 and then you'll get to be 30 and you'll get to be 35 and you'll have accumulated a lot of skills. And then that process, and this is the real point that I've been trying to make, that process of chasing after one thing at a time until you sort of master it and move on is going to start to feel empty. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And that's why I'm telling you, like, I've talked to you when you're 30 and I've talked to you when you're 45, and that's what I've seen from people like you. And then ultimately what brings these people happiness is like a a stark and difficult exploration that's entirely internal. Um, and if you have questions about that, or if at some point you feel directionless, or you feel like you have difficulty, you know, and you don't know what to do with your life, like, you know, shoot me a DM. Because I, okay. I may be able to give you some concrete recommendations at that time. Does that All mean, right, I'll remember that. Does that... No, yeah, that, that makes a lot of how, sense. Okay. That's basically what I was trying... Because I, I think, like, you can't live normal people's lives if you're not a normal person. And I, I think you've already figured that out. Um, and there may be some stuff around comparison and ego and, and not being able to live up to expectations and stuff. But at the end of the day, you know, I, I think you can keep on doing what you're doing, but you'll move from one thing to the next to the next to the next... And you may feel accomplished and you may feel like you're progressing, but it'll start to feel empty, is my guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can. <laughs> I mean, that is a worry um, that I've had. So I have, yeah, I've but, thought but... about that a little bit. Um, so I, I, I definitely know what you're saying. But but I, I would also say that, like. There's no it's worth it for you to go down that road so you feel that worry very genuinely. I don't know. I'm not saying you should avoid that, is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I, I'm, I'm definitely still going to um, pursue a lot of my goals. Yeah, yeah, um, I think you should. Absolutely. Any last questions for me, 5up? Um, not so much question, but more of like a, a thank you for talking to me i guess and having the time 
Yeah, of course, man. I, I, you know, I feel like I kind of owe you an apology because I'm not sure how helpful this was. And I, I really do try to help people, but I don't know. Maybe it's not having the cam. I'm not quite sure. Um, no, I mean, I think it was, if anything, like no matter how helpful it was, I mean, talking to a person is also nice about the things and advice about it from a different perspective. It's always sure. really good. Yeah, I feel like I have I have a karmic debt that needs to be paid in this conversation. I feel like what I'm supposed to give you, I haven't given you yet. Hmm. Um I think you I think you have to a very big degree, but also I don't think I've given you the means to like I don't think I know what I need to give to help you also, I guess possible i i don't need um just to clarify i don't need you to it's just a feeling i'm sharing with you okay it's not a particular response i'm looking for but you know mm -hmm. yeah no, i was just letting you know. maybe we can talk more about your brother <laughs> <laughs> sure um so listen thank you very much and are you interested in learning meditation five up um, sure. I mean, I've, yeah. What am I going to teach you? Have you, have you watched our, have you learned alternate nostril breathing? I don't think so. Actually, we're going to do a different one for you. Um, okay. Give me a second. Okay. So I'm going to do something a little bit different for you. Okay. I want you to close your eyes. Okay. And listen to the sound of your breath. Can you hear it? Mm hmm. Um, and so, what I want you to do is Phonetically, spell out the sound of the breath. That's hard. Uh, yep. hmm. So can you give me anything? Give me a bad answer before a good one. You want me to say it out loud? Sure, whatever you've got, whatever you... Whatever you can think of. I think it's like inhaling is a lot of like S's mm -hmm. and exhaling is a lot of H's. Okay. Good. So practice it for a, a couple of weeks and then let me know uh, and just see if you can figure it out. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's difficult. All right. Yeah, sure. so it, it requires it requires practice and it requires you focusing your attention on something relatively internal. But I, I think for definitely for you, five up, you want well, I mean you can learn formal meditation at some point, but I think an investigative technique is definitely the way for you to start. Okay. Any last thoughts or questions before we wrap up? G um, good answer, by the way. You're on the right track. Okay. Um, I don't. I don't think I have a question that comes to mind right now. Um, okay. Anything from your side, I guess. Nope. That's All it. All right. Man. Yeah. All take right, care. Well. All right. Well, thank you for having me. Thanks for coming on, Five Up. And I, I really do want to watch one of y'all's uh, Among Us streams now. Yeah, we usually play at um, 8 p.m. PST, or it's not 8 p.m., 8 a.m. PST. Uh, go all the way to, like, generally 2 p.m. Or not 2 p.m., 1 p.m. Okay. Um, and sometimes we do night streams. Okay, cool. Sounds good. <laughs> all right. Um, Take care, man. I guess I'm... Thank you, too. Bye. Bye. All right, chatters. 
Sorry about that. I, I don't know what was going on. I don't know if it was me or him or not the face or what. But I felt like I was kind of off my game today.